Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this one's for JKJK. This is Color Swatches and Themes and Color.Adobe.com. All right, you may not think that, that uh, color swatches are important if you come from motion graphics and, and video, but it sure is. If you want to tie in the same design elements in creating a title, lower third, graphics, or what have you, it's really great to be able to pick the same colors from different places. Now, I wanna show you how we can work with the creation of swatches within Creative Cloud, also within Premiere Pro, which doesn't support it, but I'll show you how, and After Effects. Let's go have a look. So here I am in Photoshop, and if you want to create a swatch, the best way to do that is to grab the eyedropper and click somewhere. And over in the colors, you'll see that color picked over there, and you'll also see it in this lineup of swatches. If you click on the new item down here, it'll create a new swatch for you, which you can name, and you can now add this to the current library. So if I click that, click OK, you'll see it just showed up there as swatch number six. So that's an easy way to tie in what you're doing here with the Creative Cloud. So if I log into my Creative Cloud account anywhere or go to color.adobe.com, those swatches will be available everywhere. You can also connect this with um, smartphone, uh, Adobe smartphone apps that can be picking and choosing those colors and they'll land in the same library. If you select the foreground color on the left-hand side, I just wanna show you that there are other color libraries built into Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign where you can choose, you know, many of these different color libraries. You can pick a color, click OK, and when you come out of it, you now have a CMYK or RGB color value that previously was, for instance, a Pantone color. And then you could save that too as the same thing. So I could save that. I could name it. Now, Pantone colors aside, you're not going to be able to match every one of those with RGB, but just to give you an idea how you could really bridge the gap from all of these different formats. All right, now let's jump into color.adobe.com and we're in the explore tab. And as you can see, there is a ton of themes in here. And these themes are a collection of uh, swatches together to create a theme. That theme can be the certain uh, identifiable colors to a brand identity or logo or from a photograph, which I'll show you in a second. Now, any of these, you can save anyone. Click on save and you can save the name, you can save it to your library, you can add tags if you want. You can also create your own and publish those back to this explore area. And if you go to my themes, which will be different for everyone, this is where you can save your own themes. And these are the same themes that were in my library back in Photoshop. Over here on the right hand side in Photoshop. Now, if you go to create, this is where you get to a very interesting area. And this incredible color wheel can help us create color harmony. For instance, if you click over here on the left-hand side, you'll see this wheel start to change. And one moving one of these is going to move all of them. The main one here, I can grab on any other of these and start to move them around and create a different look. On the left-hand side, there are different color rules, analogous, monochromatic, triad, and this will keep things in the position of a triad. Complementary colors, so if you're ever wondering what a complementary color would be to that blue you just created, well, how about these nice gold and tan tones? Compound, same kind of idea where they're going to give you a compound rule, the color rule, or just shades if you want a certain color and you want shades of that color. If you start moving towards the center, it removes this saturation to that color. Moving further out saturates it even more. And then in custom, you can actually create your own uh, look here that you want. Now, the other thing you can do on the right-hand side, there's a create from image button. And if I click on that, I'll load an image. So I'm gonna load this one of fall colors. And immediately, 
Adobe Color looks at all of the different colors in here and gives me, over here on the left, a colorful view of that. It picked those automatically by looking at this and finding the most colorful ones. I think that's great. But if we want even brighter, click over here and it finds the brighter ones, muted ones, deep, dark, or custom, which we can move these to any position we want. So let's go back to colorful. And if I click over here on the left, you'll get the same save to library. So I'm saving the same theme, but maybe I want to start with this and then tweak it a little bit. So instead of uh, clicking save, if I go back to the color wheel, there's the colors I just created. Now I can, I can uh, choose which one is the base color. That's what this triangle is over here. And if I choose that as the base color, now when I move things around, that color will stay and the rest of the colors will move with it. So right now we're in custom, but if we go to compound, remember I made that my base color, so all the rest of those will change. So now it's a base color based on that with all of these uh, now based on the compound color rule. Click on save, and I'm just gonna call this fall. Compound. I'm going to save it in my Creative Cloud library, and I could place it in any of the libraries that I have. I can add tags, and I could choose to publish this if I want. I'm not going to. I'm just going to click Save, and there it is. It shows up directly in my themes. There it is, the Fall Compound. If we go back over to Photoshop, and down here at the bottom, we Resync that. There's my fall compound colors. So there you go. We've created this uh, amazing theme of all of these different colors based on an image, but tweaked a little bit by me, and it shows up immediately in my color library throughout my Creative Cloud account. I think that's really useful. Now you can go to the window menu extensions. And you can open up the same kind of tool directly in here as a color theme. I want to show you a special technique inside Illustrator that will recolor hundreds of pieces of artwork instantly and keep with the same color rules. Let's have a look at this. So first of all, I'm just going to grab a symbol out of the retro library. So there's my retro library You can drag that in here. And you can see we've got a very colorful bus. I'm going to break that apart. I'm, I'll expand that into multiple objects. So now this is a bunch of shapes, which I can recolor. I'll select the whole thing. And in our color guide panel over here, down at the bottom, oh, look at that, edit or apply colors. And when I click on this, it opens up the, this recolor artwork dialog box. We can choose any number of colors, but we can also hit the edit button. And here's our familiar friend over here where we can now recolor this artwork. And you can see as I'm moving that around, it's recoloring every single piece of that artwork. And I could have these show up as, as uh, swatches too uh, at the same time. You can also uh, change this so that the brightness and, and show the brightness and the hue on the wheel or show saturation and hue on the wheel. You can also display a segmented wheel with smaller colors or a, uh, a bunch of color bars. I think this is pretty cool. It recolors all of those automatically. So that's an extra special thing inside Illustrator. And if I wanted to, my color themes, all of those are still available here to recolor. Now let's talk about motion graphics. Let's jump into After Effects. So there is a, a library panel in After Effects. And the way that this works is you have to find something that uh, will respond to a color. You can't just use colors for anything. You have to be something that you can color. Can't grab a video and then pick a color. I could grab a, an effect that uses a color and then pick a color. I'm just going to recolor this uh, type that's right here. So with the character palette available, notice that I can click on the eyedropper tool, move it on top of, of any of these, including the themes that I had loaded earlier. There's the, the, the new compound theme that I had loaded. Click on that, pick a color from that, and it recolors it.
Pretty simple, pretty easy, but maybe not obvious if you didn't know that you would maybe write down the RGB equivalent of that color or, or save a, a snapshot of that somewhere else. Here, it's much easier. Now let's get to the bear of all of this, Premiere Pro. Oh boy. Well, Premiere Pro for a short while had a bug where you could pick the colors from the library. And I'm sure this will be fixed and changed in the future. But what happened in the latest update is the bug was fixed, which means the library color swatches, which are have not been compatible with Premiere Pro, are actually dimmed. They're turned off. But I got a little tip for you. Let's jump to Premiere Pro. I want to color this title here with one of the colors that I've saved in my library. Well, I'm simply going to, I'm, I'm basically going to resize my window. This is After Effects in the back, and this is Premiere Pro in the front. I'm going to open up my title, click on the eyedropper, and then I'm going to move it over to After Effects. And here's where I can pick those colors. Click on there. And now I've recolored it because you'll notice over on the bottom left, all of the colors are grayed out because they're not supported. I know that's a, a little bit of a lame workaround, but hey, it does work in a pinch. And any of the libraries, if I could see Illustrator in the background or Photoshop in the background, I could pick those colors from that, that eyedropper. If I'm creating a color mat in, in Premiere Pro, same thing, I could pick any of those colors. Another thing you might do is to take a screenshot of the library itself. Hey, I know that's lame, but take a, a picture of that and then put that in your library and then you could pick that in the library in a Premiere Pro because it doesn't support it. All right, so there you go, JK, JK. Um, I thought we'd give a round trip all the way around the horn. Uh, of course, I didn't show things like uh, InDesign or Muse or Flash or Animate or anything like that, but they're all based on the same idea, same libraries that are shareable where you can use these wherever you want. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Revealed, please take a moment and subscribe. Uh, if you want to support us a little bit more, join us on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month. My name is Colin Smith, and I'll see you next time because it's my job to get you looking your best.